And welcome sports fans to today's roundtable. Glad you joined us today. We've got a lot to get to, and including high school football from last night. And also we'll touch on some volleyball happening in the past week. Looking forward to next week. And even touch on some Major League Baseball. What a night it was for the Cardinals last night. We'll touch on that in just a few moments. So uh, moving into the next round of the playoffs will be for the weekend. So we'll take, talk about that. Touch on some college football taking place today over the weekend and also NFL football. And the state rankings for the state of Missouri in football and volleyball. So that all take place in our program and be sure to give us a shout sports at yhctv.com if you want to get involved in our show uh, shoot have any shout outs want to bring up any topics or just get involved in our show shoot them to us sports at yhctv.com and let's go to some scores from last night and we'll start off with the game we had here on yhc it was park hill central and dexter park hill central coming away with that victory 27 to 7 and a close game throughout. It was just Park Hills adding a few scores there late to, to push it ahead. But Dexter only uh, able to get one score, and it came on their first drive. And we'll go ahead and go to some highlights of that game from last night. And uh, go ahead and mute uh, the DDR2, if you would, Rick, uh, as we take a look here. Uh, this is the first drive for uh, take down the score, please. There you go. Uh, nice pass there by Dowdy along the right sideline. And he gets away from pressure here, goes along the left side, and gets a nice block downfield being able to pick up that first down. And continuing the drive, this is a pass to Ethan Stevens for the touchdown. A nice opening drive for the Bearcats, starting out 7 nothing, but Park Hill Central answers back in the second quarter with a score there, and they convert the two-point conversion. They're up 8-7, and a long pass on Dowdy. Uh, Dowdy to Chase Young here. And Chase Young goes up the right, uh, right side, dodges a few tackles, gets inside the five, but uh, the Bearcats were unable to score. Uh, on that instance, they go for a field goal here later in the half, and uh, I think that was on the same drive, so they didn't come up with any points. A big block there uh, by Park Hill Central uh, defending that goal line, and later on in the half, as the half winded down, Park Hill Central on a nice run here. But don't, we're unable to score there at the end of the half. But later on in the third quarter, there at the end of the third, a long run uh, by Park Hill Central there over 50 yards. Uh, pretty much put it away at that point uh, there in the second half. They, they uh, had a few more scores, and that was it for that game. But a nice game between those two teams, a, re a rematch of last year's Class Three regional game. And that game went into overtime, Park Hill Central winning. But a uh, pretty good game there, defensive battle last night. Dexter really... Played well through pretty much three quarters uh, when it comes to uh, the de defensive side. A very tough, physical Park Hill Central team. They just line up uh, two or three backs in the backfield and just pound it. And they just pick up those four to six yards all night long. Had a few big plays as we saw there. But uh, Dexter hung in there for pretty much three quarters on the defensive side but just weren't able to punch in some points there on the offense. They had two opportunities at uh, such as we've shown on the missed field goal. They had another opportunity on a turnover there. I think we'll end the 10, 15 yard line uh, there where a chance to score. We're unable to come away with any points. So uh, Dexter left a few opportunities on the field there in the first half and just, uh, just weren't able to put any points on the board after that first drive. But a competitive game between those two teams and uh, Park Hill Central moving on. They're up at the top of that class three district, Dexter will uh, uh, fall to, I think, 1-6 and six on the year, if I'm not mistaken, and 1-7. And, seven. and just, uh, just staying in games, Dexter just unable to you know, come up with plays here and there uh, to put points on the board. And turn turnovers have been uh, kind of their Achilles heel for this year, but didn't really play into, uh, into the game last night. But just uh, offensive consistency, putting the ball in the end zone, just uh, come up a little short last night but they're staying competitive and they're getting better each week uh, so come down to district time when it comes to the tournament you never know what might happen in those district games and moving on to some other games from last night Malden got a sizable victory over Kennett 67 22 the Malden Green Wave playing very well this time of year Romello McCoy I think he's leading the southeast Missouri and rushing and he had a big night last night they were up uh, pretty much big in the halftime kind of put it on cruise control at that point, but 
Malden looking good, and what a game that'll be next week. Malden and Dexter down there in Malden. Always a big clash between those two teams. Should be competitive. We're looking forward to see how that game plays out next Friday night. Also, we have Fredericktown, big over New Madrid County Central in a shutout, 35 to nothing. That was the halftime score between those two teams, and Fredericktown just put it on cruise control for the second half. Come away with that 35 to nothing victory. Also, Chaminade over Cape Central in overtime, 21 to 14. Cape Central dropping that one to Chaminade last night. Also, we have Chaffee over Jefferson, 41 to 39, and a close one there. Um, Charleston over East Prairie, big, and a shutout, 66 to nothing. Charleston, Charleston looking good in that Class 2 district so far this year. Also, we have Crothersville over Haytai, 13 to 6, and I have, I have a few port, uh, a few reports on this game. I think that's the correct score. I hope we have that uh, correct score on there, but uh, if that's the case, Haytai playing very competitive with Crothersville. It's a big rivalry between those two Pimscott County schools. And uh, I think uh, Crothersville, I'm, I don't have an official word on this, but I think there's some uh, rumor of some uh, injuries to the Crothersville Tigers that may have uh, uh, hurt them in this contest. But Haytai is going to be competitive in any game they have, been, uh, any game they're in. Uh, I think the one thing with Haytai this year, they've really struggled with turnovers. It seems like any game they're in that they've lost, they've had multiple turnovers. And I talk about multiple, it's four, five, six turnovers. So... If they just uh, eliminate those turnovers, they're going to be competitive in any game that they play, and it proved to be the case last night against the Crothersville Tigers. So both of those teams competitive here at the end of the year. We'll be looking forward to seeing how uh, they go on through the rest of the season. Also, we have Hickman over Jackson. Two big schools there, 27-14. to 14. Also, Poplar Bluff defeating Normandy in a close one, 13-12. to 12. Also, Living Word Christian, a big over Scott City, 57 to 12. And down in Piggott, uh, Rivercrest defeated Piggott, 48 to 16. And those are the scores from last night. And a big week coming down to the end of the season. I think we've got one more week of the regular season. Then we'll enter district play for the 10th game of the season. So a lot of big games. Still yet to be played, and look forward to next week. New Matter County Central is at Portageville. That'll be on Thursday night. We'll be down there for that to replay that on Friday night. We'll probably replay that Friday and even Saturday. And we'll also be down in Pickett Friday night for Harrisburg and Pickett, replaying Sunday and Tuesday. Now, also Dexter at Mullen, as we mentioned. Charleston's at Chaffee. Kennett's at East Prairie. Cardinal Ritter at Sykeston. St. Genevieve at Crothersville. Chaminade at Poplar Bluff. So some big games to look forward to next Friday in high school football. And to touch on some other things, high school volleyball. They had some uh, conference tournaments wrap up this week. And South Pemiscot defeated Mullen in the Boot Hill Conference Championship this past week. And sizable victory for South Pemiscot. They're very competitive uh, in their conference and had, had no problem with Mullen. And they're going to look good going into district play here in the next week. So uh, it's going to look uh, pretty competitive for South Pemiscot going forward. And also in the Stoddard County, uh, Stoddard County Conference Tournament, uh, the finals will be down to Advance and Bernie. Advance and Bernie for that title game. I think that might be Monday night, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, those teams will go out for the Stoddard County title here in the next few days. So uh, Also to touch on Major League Baseball from last night. What a game. For the Cardinals defeating the Nationals, coming down to the last few outs, actually the last out uh, there in the top of the ninth, uh, down 7-5, to five and uh, Carlos Beltran led off the inning, uh, led off the top of the ninth with a double, and Holiday grounded out, had a few walks uh, to get on, and it was uh, Daniel Descazo hitting that single up the middle off the glove of the shortstop there for the Nationals. And two runs scored, Beltron, and uh, I think it was, uh, no, it was, I think it was Cummings that pinch run for Yadier Molina. Yadier Molina drew the walk and uh, ended up uh, at second and had the pinch run. Two runs came in, tied it up, and it was uh, Cosma coming up with two guys on, uh, second and third, or actually I think it was bases loaded at that point, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but at least second and third hit that. 
A liner to right field, drove in two runs, 9-7. Jason Mott closed out the ninth. And in typical Cardinals fashion here in the past year, doing it when it counts in the ninth inning in the clutch. And they advance on to the National League Championship Series as they'll take on the San Francisco Giants. Game one will be Sunday, 7-07 on Fox. And that'll be in San Francisco. So they'll have two games there in San Francisco, three straight. And that'll be... Uh, Maybe, I think it might be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I can't, I'm not sure. But three straight games in St. Louis, potentially. So uh, might as well get a, a win there, at least in San Francisco. Close it out in St. Louis. Move back on to the World Series again this year. So the Cardinals defending their National League crown against the Giants starting Sunday, 7.07 on Fox. So... Uh, looks like uh, the Magic's whipped up the right time for the Cardinals. Hopefully they can continue that starting this weekend. And on the AL side, the Yankees uh, defeated the Orioles last night. They move on to the ALCS as they take on the Detroit Tigers, who uh, defeated the A's, Oakland A's. Game 1 will be tonight. That's Saturday night at 7.07 on TBS. Should be a competitive series between those two teams as well. So we might, might look forward to a 2006 rematch of the World Series. Uh, of course, that was the Cardinals defeating the Tigers back in 06, so never know. We'll see how it all plays out. A much better team this year, <laughs> the Detroit Tigers team this year than 06, that's for sure, but uh, still a good team in the Yankees as well. And what a, uh, what a story with Alex Rodriguez, the $275 million man being benched in yesterday's game against the Orioles. And he's making $27.5 million a year, and he's on the bench. And uh, quite a story. Hall, future Hall of Famer now, Alex Rodriguez, one of the best of all time, being benched in a big, pivotal playoff series game. So I don't know how that's going to unfold in the ALCS against an even tougher opponent and bigger stakes with the Detroit Tigers. So I don't know. It's quite a story. And Joe Girardi, you got to give it to him. It was the right move. It, <laughs> Of course, uh, they pinched hit for him in the game before. They Actually, the past couple games, and Raul Abanez puts the ball in the bleachers in a pinch hit. You know, it was the right move. You can't really, uh, can't really dispute it. So, uh, yeah, a pretty good move, bold move by Joe Girardi. You don't ever just put a Hall of Famer down on the bench just because he's having a bad game, but he did. And, uh, or bad, actually, bad postseason. He's really been tough I think batting 100 or 125 in the postseason this year and just not getting it done but uh, the guys stepping in are so we'll see how that story develops for the weekend uh, into game one tonight and that ALCS and we're going to take a break and when we come back we're going to talk about the state rankings for Missouri high school volleyball and football we'll be back with those next Welcome to NFL Total Access. The show that takes you inside the locker room and down on the field. With inside access to all 32 teams all year long. NFL Total Access, Monday through Saturday, only on NFL Network. NFL Network, where football season never ends. In addition to unlimited calling, New Wave Telephone users have a wide range of great phone features available. And now with the help of New Wave Internet, they're even easier to use thanks to our convenient online phone manager. Just log on to your MyWave portal. Now phone features like call forwarding can be set up instantly from any computer. Reliably activate or deactivate your call forwarding. And even set your home phone to ring once when a call is forwarded. Home telephone service made even better with New Wave Communications. Call today. 
Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance is celebrating our 100th year. We started protecting rural farmers way back in 1910, insuring folks no one else would. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance has been a family business for four generations, and we continue that tradition today, providing solid home, farm, and commercial insurance at very competitive rates. When the ice storm hit us, we were out there with you. All of our claims were processed within days, and we will continue to provide the best coverage and the best service for the next hundred years. Southeast Missouri Mutual Insurance, a century of service. And let's take a look at those state rankings for Missouri football, starting out with Class 1, and it's Hamilton on top once again. 2, Tipton moving up to 2, Valley Catholic at number 3, 4, Miller, 5, Wellington, Napoleon, 6, South Harrison, 7, Westron, 8, Salisbury, 9, Cass Midway, and a two-way tie for number 9, and the second number 9 is Skyline. In Class 2, Lafayette County at number one, two, Maplewood, Richmond Heights, three, Clark County, four, Mountain Grove, five, Blair Oak, six, Crothersville, remaining at number six this week, seven, Holden, eight, Mountain View Liberty, dropping all the way down to number eight. They took a loss, uh, I think it was a week or two ago, moving, I think, down from three all the way down to eight, nine, Stratford, and ten, South Callaway. In Class 3, John Burrow still on top at number 1, 2, Maryville, 3, Cassville, 4, Oak Grove, 5, Hogan Prep, 6, St. Genevieve, 7, California, a two-way tie for, between California and Centralia, 9, Clinton, and 10, Park Hills Central, moving in to the top 10 for the first time this year. In Class 4, Webb City at number 1, 2, Savannah, 3, Saxton, 4, Hannibal, 5, St. Dominic, 6, Sullivan, 7, Harrisonville, 8, Hillcrest, 9, Jeff City, Helias, and 10, Miller Career Academy. And in Class 5, Lee Summit West on top of number 1, 2, Kirkwood, 3, Rockwood Summit, 4, Staley, 5, Fort Osage, 6, Parkway Central, 7, Ozark, 8, Webster Groves, a two-way tie between at Webster Groves and Winnetonka, and Hazelwood East at number 10. And those are your Missouri football rankings for this week. We still got some teams remaining in the top ten there. Crothersville, I know, at number six. Uh, Park Hill Central moving into the top ten there in class three. Uh, Crothersville at number two, or as yeah, I was speaking of Crothersville at number two, or excuse me, number six in class two. In class three, St. Genevieve there and still in the top ten. Park Hill Central moving in, and I'm still surprised Portageville hasn't moved into that top ten. And the Class 1 poll, they've had decisive victories over the course of this season and defeating and playing well and even in Class 2, Class 3 uh, schedules. So they're kind of surprised that Portageville hasn't moved in that top 10 so far this year. But uh, we'll just see how it all develops in the next few weeks. And the volleyball and the state rankings in volleyball will start out in Class 1. Valley Catholic still on top of number 1. Two advance still there at number 2. 3, Midway, 4, Green Ridge, 5, Winona, 6, Pierce City, 7, Lutheran out of Kansas City, 8, Bernie, 9, Leopold, and 10, Santa Fe. So Bernie moves in back into the top 10 this week. Leopold moves up to number 9. In Class 2, St. Pius out of Festus at number 1 still. 2, Fatima, 3, St. Paul Lutheran, 4, Fair Grove, 5, Bishop LeBlanc, 6, El Dorado Springs, 7, Mountain Grove, 8, Mountain View Liberty, 9, Ash Grove, and 10, Holden. And in Class 3, Westminster Academy at number 1, 2, Cape Notre Dame. Moving up to number 2, 3, Pleasant Hill, 4, St. Pius out of Kansas City, 5, Carl Junction, 6, Buffalo, 7, Lutheran South, 8, Archbishop O'Hara, 9, Logan Rogersville, 10, Reed Spring. And Class 4, Lafayette at number one, two St. Joseph's Academy, three Lee Summit West, four Francis Howell, five Blue Springs, six Lee Summit North, seven Park Hill South, eight Ozark, nine Marquette, and ten Jeff City Helias. And those are your volleyball state rankings for this week. We try to bring to you each week here on the round table. And we'll take a break and we'll talk about some local college football games, also into NFL football. 
And we'll be taking your emails as well. So keep those coming in. Sports at YHCTV.com. And don't go away. We'll be back. At Glenn Sainte Kennett, we have a lot full of inventory and the best rebates of the year. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glenn Sainte. We just want the opportunity to talk to you about your next car or truck. Our rebates are the best of the year and interest rates the lowest to work with. It's a great time to buy and our people are excited to help you make the right choice. We realize you have a lot of dealers to choose from, but I can assure you no one appreciates your business like we do. Glenn Sainte and Kennett, and God bless our troops. With an interactive home security system from New Wave, your family comes home to peace of mind. Now we bring you the future of home security. Arm and disarm your system remotely from your office computer or iPhone. Even look in on family or pets with live video from inside your home. In an emergency, our 24-7 alarm monitoring responds with the help you need. Peace of mind, wherever you are. Now available from New Wave Communications. When I was a kid, we didn't have all these wireless devices. We only had one computer plugged into the wall, and we were grateful. Technology changes fast. Stay ahead with blazing fast internet speeds from New Wave Communications. New Wave delivers the internet with incredible speeds, up to 50 megabits per second. Pick the package that's right for you. New Wave, the area's fastest internet, period. Kids today don't know how good they have it. And we'll take a look at some college football games taking place today. And starting off with a, a Big 12 game between Texas, 15th ranked Texas at 13th ranked Oklahoma. Game to look forward to today. 17th ranked Stanford at 7th ranked Notre Dame. And this is, I think this is Notre Dame's chance to really uh, make a statement game. They've had some big wins, but uh, really no marquee game to really you know, put on that bulletin board. And Stanford, pretty tough team out of the Pac-12. And a victory over them uh, bodes well for the Irish if they can uh, pull off an impressive victory against the Stanford Cardinal for today. Also, fifth-ranked West Virginia at Texas Tech. And West Virginia uh, getting some love in the poll in the top five. So uh, we'll see how that plays out today with Texas Tech. Boston College at 12th-ranked Florida State. Fourth-ranked Florida at Vanderbilt. Third-ranked South Carolina at ninth-ranked LSU. And that's a big game today. They're in the, the uh, SEC. South Carolina having a very impressive year so far. LSU coming off that loss against Florida. They'll certainly want to get back on the winning path. And that's going to be an LSU today. So a big game between those two. 22nd-ranked Texas A&M at 23rd-ranked Louisiana Tech moving into the top 25. Also, we have top-ranked Alabama at Missouri. Big game for the Tigers today. And they're coming off a loss to Vanderbilt. And they've got the top-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide coming into Columbia today. Got their hands full, of course. We'll see how that plays out in Columbia for today. And our local team, South Alabama at Arkansas State in Jonesboro later on today. Also, SEMO hosting Tennessee State in the Ohio Valley Conference. So those are the games to look forward to today in college football and taking a look at the NFL football games for today and or not today but uh, over the weekend Sunday and into Monday the Cowboys at the Ravens big game there in Baltimore should be a t uh, competitive game between those two also the St. Louis Rams on the road to Miami take on the Dolphins the Detroit Lions at the Philadelphia Eagles these are two teams it's struggling right now. Uh, can't really find any consistency that we've uh, seen in the past, especially from the Lions. We thought this was going to be their kind of breakout year to really make a run, but they've got a bad start and look to get back on the winning path against the Eagles in Philadelphia. And Philadelphia really needs a win. Uh, they can't get down too too far, and especially out of the NFC East uh, with the uh, Cowboys and the Giants and even the Redskins can more competitive this year, so Eagles certainly need a win. The Patriots head out west to take on the Seattle Seahawks, and one, this one of the more surprising teams this year. The Seahawks very competitive, got some big wins, uh, some of them controversial, but <laughs> still yet it's a win, and we'll see how that plays out in Seattle 
for tomorrow. The Vikings at the Redskins. Usually we wouldn't see this being much of a matchup. The Vikings actually, I think, 4-1 uh, and one in the, on the year so far. Very impressive start. And they take on the Redskins in Washington. And uh, I think it's still a toss-up whether Robert Griffin III will be starting for the Redskins. He suffered, suffered a concussion against Atlanta last week. And uh, it's questionable whether he'll be playing tomorrow. So we'll see how that plays out. Also, the rematch of the NFC Championship game from last year, the Giants at the 49ers. Should be a good game between those two teams, probably the game of the week. And uh, we'll see how that plays out there in San Francisco. The Bills take on the Cardinals in Arizona. Arizona, one of the more surprising teams this year. Off to a great start. The Colts at the Jets. And uh, it just may be Tebow time this weekend. As the Colts take on the Jets, uh, Sanchez, the starting quarterback, of course, but uh, the Jets struggling, and uh, we'll see how all that plays out in New York for the weekend. The Colts coming off that big victory against the Packers last week. They come from behind victory, uh, behind Andrew Luck and the Colts, and we'll see if that if they can keep that momentum going into New York this Sunday. Also, in Sunday Night Football, the Packers take on the Texans in Houston. Big match between those two teams. And we'll see how that plays out. Uh, Texans off to a great start. Packers trying to recover from that loss to the Colts. And uh, should be a great matchup Sunday night there on NBC. And the Monday night football game. Monday night football on ESPN will be the Broncos at the Chargers. An AFC West showdown. It'll probably come down to those two teams there this year in the AFC West. And uh, Peyton Manning and the Broncos travel to San Diego. Take on the Chargers. And those are the games to look forward to this weekend in NFL football. So a busy weekend in football once again this weekend. So keep those emails coming, sports at YCTV.com. We've got a couple to take here. So uh, keep those coming. We'll spend the rest of our show here uh, with the emails from our viewers. So sports at YCTV.com. And we'll take one here. Uh, we don't have a name, but uh, we got a question. Uh, what's your take on Portageville not being in the top ten in the class one poll this week or even the, in past weeks and uh, as i mentioned before in the, the segment we had the rankings really not sure i really thought uh, after a couple big wins uh such as new madrid county central which uh, you know they're having a tough year but a decisive or no excuse me uh, not new madrid county central but uh <clears throat> kennett decisive win over kennett as they are having a tough year but they've had some pretty decisive victories over some class two and class three teams that I thought that would really propel them there into that top ten. And uh, I, and, and a lot of that probably goes into previous seasons. You know, Portageville hasn't had a – I don't think they've had a winning record over the past few years. So that kind of goes into, you know, consistent uh, winning seasons to, to get the love in the polls. So, you know, having one good season after a few struggling seasons, probably not as impressive as a team that – you know, consistently getting six, seven, eight wins year in and year out, and are into that in that poll each year. Uh, so that's probably some of the case in that. Uh, just Portageville just coming out of nowhere this year with an undefeated season, uh, just probably being overlooked in that regard, having uh, a couple struggling seasons in years before. But coming down to the end of the year, uh, you throw the polls out. It really doesn't matter. It's just a matter of other t other sports riders across the state. You know giving you the love, I guess you would call it. So uh, Portageville is going to be competitive in that Class 1. going to be a very competitive Class 1 district there, though, with, with uh, Valley Catholic defending state champs. Also, you throw in, uh, uh, yeah, they're number third-ranked team in the state. Uh, Thayer's always tough there in the Class 1, and even Haytai. Haytai is going to be competitive at the end of the year as well. Portageville ha has a victory over Haytai earlier in the year. And I thought that was one of the games, too. Haytai actually started out the season in the top ten and uh, had a few losses there to take him out. But I really thought that was kind of one of the marquee wins to really uh, set them apart from the other Class One competition here locally. But uh, haven't got into that top ten poll this year so far. But I think they're one of the more competitive teams in the state. But the Class One district really going to be tough. Valley Catholic. And Thayer and even Haytai, it's going to be very competitive. So uh, Portageville should should compete well for that Class 1 district title and potentially maybe even into the state playoffs there in Class 1. And keep them coming, sports at YHCTV.com, sports at YHCTV.com. 
and we'll take your emails here on the air. We've got one here. We've got one for volleyball, and we've got a shout-out to the Bernie volleyball team beating uh, Dexter in the uh, semifinals at Stoddard County Conference Tournament in volleyball, and a uh, way to go. Uh, way to go Mules and their victory over Dexter and good luck in the championship against Advance and uh, quite, a, quite a turnaround by Bernie. They really hit a tough stretch a couple weeks ago and I think they lost I think five matches in a row and being state ranked I know it was disappointing for them but they've kind of turned the corner a little bit and turned it around and got an impressive victory over Dexter in that semifinal round. And keep those emails coming, sports at YHCTV.com. And we got email here regarding the Crowsville Tigers. I uh, want to know about the injury that I uh, alluded to for the Crowsville Tigers and uh, want to know if I had any information to share on that. I do not. Uh, there was some chatter in the press box last night about uh, Crowsville linemen maybe uh, having an injury. We don't have the full story on that. We'll try to get some follow-up on that. Uh, but I'm not really not. I don't have any specific details on that. It might just be a player setting out a game. I'm really not sure. But uh, we'll see how that plays out uh, in the next week. I know Daryl Monroe sat out a few games. I'm, I'm not sure if he's back full health or not at this point. But he sat out a few games, and they didn't have any problem uh, with him out. They still uh, were quite competitive in their their games. But I think he's back and playing. And I think they've had some other injuries that may be affecting them, affecting them this week. So really not sure. I don't want to say for sure what's going on there, but uh, might be some injuries there for the Crowsville Tigers from this week. And keep them coming, sports at YHCTV.com. And we'll take your emails here on the air. And we got one from Mullen. And saying go Big Green. Big win over Kennett last night in the Stoddard, or in the, excuse me, the Dunklin County uh, championship and dominating Dunklin County uh, over the past few years and good luck uh, with Dexter next week. Uh, pull off uh, the big win against the Big Red and Dexter. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, big rivalry between those two teams. Uh, as of course, Kennett and, Dun or Kennett and Malden are there in Dunklin County. Also uh, Malden and Dexter just here about 10 miles or so away from each other here on Highway 25, and it should be a great game there in Malden next week as Dexter takes the ride down to Malden, and uh, should be should be a great game between those two teams. Have been for the past few years. Uh, Malden, Malden winning on their home field two years ago. Come back up here last year, Dexter defeated Malden, so Dexter will take, uh, take the trip down to Malden next week. Should be a great game between those two teams, and I think it's going to come down to Dexter being able to contain Romello McCoy, and not allowing him to get big yardage, keeping Malden in a short game, being able to just pound out drives, long drives. I think that's going to be uh, the big thing coming into that game, whether Dexter can keep Malden and methodical drives, 10-plus plays, and not allowing Romello McCoy to get space and move the ball up the field against the Bearcat defense. So I think that's going to be the, the compelling story going into that game whether well, Dexter can contain the big play potential of Ramella McCoy. And also uh, the Dexter, the Mullen defense is going to have to be physical. Uh, Dexter is really known for their physicality up front. Uh, probably don't have the line that they've used to been having over the past few years, but they got some physical backs. Uh, it's going to you know, put pressure on the linebackers and even the secondary step up and make tackles. So uh, the Mullen defense is going to have to uh, – be physical and be able to be able to tackle in that contest because Dexter will challenge them uh, <clears throat> in the running game and also the passing game. We saw as we uh, saw the replays from last night that Dex uh, DJ Dowdy had an impressive opening drive looking for Ethan Stevens and Ethan Stevens as a freshman looking very good as, at receiver and he's being able to work downfield running nice routes getting separation and he's uh, going to be a threat downfield for the Bearcats for the remainder of the season. So a great matchup lined up there in Malden next week. And keep those coming, sports at YHCTV.com. Take your emails here on the air. So give us a shout, and we'll take them here over the air. We don't have any at this point, so we'll give the last few opportunities to send those in, sports at YHCTV.com. Send them in here in the last few minutes of our show. And be sure to tune in each Saturday morning, 10 a.m., here on the roundtable, where you play it through Tuesday of each week. 
You can catch it online or our website at yhctv.com. So uh, be sure to tune in each week here on the round table. We take our emails each week, get everyone involved in our show. So uh, keep those emails coming in. We don't have any more, so we'll just go ahead and wrap it up for today. And we appreciate you for tuning in as always. We look forward to having you back next week for another edition of the round table. More guests coming in for the remainder of the shows as we come wrap up the football season the regular season looking forward to district play so more coaches more uh, sports riders more commentators going to be coming in for the last part of the season so look forward to that in the next upcoming shows and until then i'm tyler wagner have yourself a great week